My name is Jeff Roussel. I am the Vice President of Sales at Kinexus, which probably means that I've talked to more organizations about continuous improvement software than anyone maybe in the world. Uh, anyway, I'm extremely excited to talk to you today for our webinar entitled Kinexus in Action. We do these in action webinars periodically just based on requests and feedback that we get from our followers who want to see a demo of Kinexus or Kinexus in action. So, uh, so let's go through it. Let's go through a brief overview today. I am going to expand this slide deck. This is the first time that we've actually used Kinexus to embed the presentation that we're going to show, which I think highlights a, a, a neat new feature in the platform. But my name is Jeff Russo, as I mentioned. And today I'm gonna spend about 20 or 25 minutes going through a demonstration of Kinexus. I'll try to touch on as many use cases as I possibly can. And then after that, if we have any time and anyone types any questions in the GoToWebinar chat panel, I'll be happy to go through those questions and answer them. And if we run out of time, I'll be happy to send you an answer afterwards. Please note that if you've registered for this webinar, you will receive a recording link and the notes via email. And then I will also upload these slides in the GoToWebinar control panel afterwards. So without any further delay, let's get started exploring Kinexus. I, I wanted to start by making sure that everyone has just a basic understanding of our belief system here at Kinexus. To me, understanding who we are at this level really allows people to know if they believe the same things that we do and if there might be then a fit to help one another. Our mission at Kinexus is to spread continuous improvement. We attract organizations that are committed to that same mission. And ultimately, the, the help that we provide fits along with this concept called the golden triangle in business. And the golden triangle says that to have an extremely success, successful initiative, you really have to focus equally on the three components of your people, your processes, and the enabling technologies that you use to support those people and processes. And at Kinexus, we focus on the technology piece of that equation. So we believe that technology plays a role in helping organizations to sustain a culture of continuous improvement. And it's our job to kind of help facilitate that. At a very high level, what you'll see in Kinexus is an interlink between the collaboration needs within an organization and the reporting and visibility requirements that people have. So in order to work on improvement projects, people have to communicate and collaborate with others. Oftentimes these projects go across departmental walls and require a collaborative effort in order to be successful. At the same time, there is a need for visibility and, rec and reporting into the status of those projects and the results. And doing this can be time consuming. And if it happens in, in the wrong way, it can be very frustrating for the people doing the improvement work. And there's a, a greater potential for errors if we have to go and kind of do things in the wrong system. And honestly, one thing we've seen is there can be a lag between the data that people are reporting and the current status. You know, if we have to leave our project and go update a presentation and present on that two days later, well, we're a couple days late on the data that we're presenting. And so we're trying to eliminate a lot of those issues by combining the collaboration needs and the reporting needs of an improvement program into one system. Now, the question is, well, how do you know if the problem you're dealing with is is a technology problem. And what I say is that technology problems come in some pretty simple flavors. If you have a issue in seeing all the improvement that's happening throughout your organization, you have a visibility problem. If your people struggle to work with one another, especially if you're, you're spread across the country or in multiple locations, well, then you have a collaboration issue. And the same goes for whether you have good standards and methods in place for whether you can track your impact and your KPIs. 
and for whether you have a good solution for sharing the improvement work that you're doing. And so we list them here as benefits, but ultimately these are the problems that people look to solve when they turn to technology. Now, specifically, what are we gonna look at today? There are a couple of key areas in how Kinexus customers use our platform. Some of them are very focused on the concept of strategy deployment. And so they will use Kinexus to visualize all of the work and the KPIs that happen as it cascades throughout the organization and as it aligns to some key true north strategic goals. And so we'll talk a little bit about that today. We have a number of customers that use us for project management or in the terms we use top down improvement. And these are typically projects that are driven by management. They might be a little bigger in scope. They might be a little more high risk, high reward. And organizations need a place to keep track of all the work that's happening around these initiatives. And then we also have customers that are very focused on the concept of bottom up improvement. Their goal is to engage their employees on, on figuring out ways to solve problems within the organization one at a time. And so whether you're just looking at one of these or whether you're looking at all three, Kinexus can be configured in order to support these different initiatives. And I think we give people a really flexible way to manage their improvement work. So why don't we take a look? We're starting off logged in as what, what I would call a frontline user. This is typically someone who works on a shop floor or maybe in an emergency room or, or in a service department. And we need that person to have a very simplified experience using a software platform like Kinexus in order to give them a chance to participate in improvement as much as possible. So our goal is to give Francis as much visibility as possible into his improvements. You can see that he's got four improvements right now that he's associated with. We've got a couple of them that are overdue. We've got a couple of them that are active, but it's very easy for him to see the work that his name is somehow associated with. In addition, we need to give him a way to search. It's important that employees be able to see the improvement work that's happening throughout the organization. So Kinexus provides a very robust search capability that allows us to see what other people are doing and drop in on those projects whenever necessary. We also need him to have a way of staying notified. One of the things that I see all the time is unfortunately, improvement work can often be reactive. We kind of bury the work in spreadsheets and presentations, and that means that people have to remember to go and check on it, and they have to remember to go and look for additional information. How much better if we can be proactive and have a system like Kinexus notify people when things happen and keep people in the conversation proactively in order to, to build a better habit? And then lastly, we need to give someone like Francis a way to capture new opportunities for improvement. If we believe that Francis is a valuable, knowledgeable commodity or, or knowledgeable person in our organization, then we want to know when he has a new idea. And so let's, let's capture one of those here in Kinexus. I always use a pretty simple example. We should move the trash can. By having an example like this, it kind of shows the simplicity that anyone can, can capture an idea of in Kinexus and we can design a process where really not that much is required. Now, truth be told, we have organizations that require significantly more information than just a title and a description when someone captures an improvement. But I will say that during this phase of simply capturing information, the easier that we can make it for people, the better. So while the system will alert Francis that there might be some other similar improvements out there that he should check into, and while he can attach files and links and, and really make this an advanced 
opportunity. He also has the opportunity to just keep this really simple. Give us a title, give us a description, and then let's submit this thing and get started. And from there, we'll let Kinexus take over and it will determine the workflows that are created so that the correct people can be notified of an event like a new opportunity for improvement. So in this case, these people are going to be notified that Francis submitted a new opportunity. That makes sure that things don't fall through the cracks and it makes sure that we're, we're not missing out on opportunities that our people voice. Now back on Francis's screen, we can see that this new opportunity is, is showing up in his list and it's in a new status. I can tell that by the blue color here. But again, you know, the goal here is that Francis can keep track of this throughout every stage of his life cycle, whether or not he's the person to actually work on this improvement. But to continue looking at it, why don't we go ahead and sign out now as Francis and we'll sign in as his manager, Greg. So as a manager in Kinexus, you can see that Greg's interface is just a little bit different than Francis. Everything kind of looks and feels the same. He's got a different dashboard as his personal dashboard, and he's got access to a few more menu options here on the left. We do this to try to keep things simple for people like, like Francis while giving someone like Greg more power in the platform. One of the things that Greg has access to is a standard board showing his team's improvements. Again, this is just an example of a dashboard that really every manager in the organization can have. And the way Kinexus works is as we kind of select the location of a dashboard, the standard dashboard stays the same, but the data that shows up changes. So this becomes a very powerful way to create some standards throughout the organization, make it much easier for your CI coaches to round on the various dashboards that are out there. And I think also just kind of make it easier for some consistency to develop on how you want managers to organize their improvement work. So what we see here is Greg's dashboard has three columns. One includes new ideas that his team has submitted. One is the active ones that we're working on. And you can see we've got an overdue one here that we probably wanna take a look at. And then one are the ones that we've completed as a team that we might wanna go back through and talk about. So Greg has the opportunity now, let's say in the next team meeting, to actually open Francis's idea and take some steps on it. Now, what might those steps be? Well, first, there's an opportunity to simply close it. If this is a bad idea, we provide a workflow for managers to identify that and capture some information that'll help the organization learn. Or maybe this is a big problem. Maybe this is something that needs to be escalated to our continuous improvement or our PMO groups and they need to decide whether or not this is this is a big enough issue that we would start up a full-blown project around it. Or let's say that this is a small enough problem that Greg thinks we can handle it on our team. So what he's going to do is he's going to assign this improvement. And maybe we don't give Francis responsibility around it, but we'll give Bo responsibility. And we'll ask Bo to do the work and to try to complete this project within 60 days. Now we have some options. We can let Bo work on it by himself, or we can add a series of collaborators and followers to a project in order to have a whole team of people put together. This becomes very popular when we're working together on projects. It's also a great way to get other teams involved, like a finance team that might have auditing responsibility on an improvement project. Lastly, we can do things like tag the work. Here, I'll assign it to our safety strategic initiative and we'll prioritize it as a medium priority. 
So we're taking the first steps to actually now implement an improvement project. We see here Bo is now responsible for it. There's a team of people working on it. We're tracking to specific dates and we're gonna walk through the details of this project. Now, admittedly, this is a pretty simple example. The details of the improvement only have a description and a proposed solution. And that might actually work great for a just do it or a small type of an improvement. But let's say that Bo decides that this is a bigger problem and he wants to use a different methodology to try to solve it. Let's say he decides that he wants to use an A3. Well, that would be as simple as him coming into Kinexus and converting this project to an A3. We'll map the description to the background. And when we click convert, what you'll see is that Kinexus will transition this project into a new template that we've designed as an A3. Now, as we walk through this project, Bo knows the steps required in order to successfully think through this problem along the lines of A3 thinking. He knows he needs to put a background. He knows he needs to understand the current condition. He knows that he needs to submit goals. He knows he needs to do a root cause analysis. This type of conversion and template configuration can happen in any number of project types. So whether you use a PDSA project methodology, whether you use a DMAIC methodology, perhaps PMBOK, perhaps you use charters, really perhaps you've created your own project methodology. Those templates can all be customized in Kinexus and you can guide your people through the steps of the methodologies that you want them to take. Now for the sake of brevity, let's close out that one and let's open up an A3 that actually has some information in it. So we're looking at an A3 called storage organization. We can see that Henry's responsible for it. We can see that it's due on the 21st. And as we scroll down the page, we can see all the different components of the A3 that we've configured in this template. There are a number of tasks that have been assigned to others. We've prioritized this project with what we call a weighted score. We're tracking the time that we're putting towards this project. We're actually tracking data as part of a run chart for the KPI that we're working toward in this project. And we've got things like before and after pictures, et cetera, all in one place, all, in, all now as part of our repository. In addition, we have the opportunity to do things like make comments and drive discussions around this A3, which again, give us a great opportunity to keep this information in one place and use Kinexus as a repository. Now, one of the steps of any project in Kinexus is now actually working through what we call resolution. In order to capture the impact on a project, resolutions step people through the requirements of capturing the benefit of the work that we're doing. So here we can see that we've already inputted both a forecast and a target resolution. As we look at the actual resolution, we see some options in the platform. What I've done here is we're asking for the outcome of the work we did. And then we're saying, did, that, did this project result in a change within our organization? In this case, I'm gonna click yes. And now it's asking me, well, what were the impacts of those changes? So in this case, I'm gonna say that we made a safety change. So qualitatively, we can count this as a safety impact and we can come back to it later anytime we're trying to see what safety changes we might have made. 
In addition, I'm gonna say that we had a cost savings component here. And I'll do something simple, like saying that we saved a thousand bucks a week and it was finance verified. By doing that, the system will then help us to understand the impact of the work that we're doing. So as I complete this improvement, we've now added the impact to the overall assessment. And now we get to the last part of the improvement stage, what we call sharing or notifications. Anytime we complete a project, the system will help us to determine if there are other parts of the organization that we want to share this with. This helps to broadcast the work that we're doing. And I think it also helps to increase the benefit of the changes that we make. So again, it gives you an opportunity to develop a process to hopefully maximize the impact of the improvement work you're doing and spread that work as far as possible across your organization. So as I complete this project, it now becomes part of the record and it's now searchable and it's now available for anyone within the organization to see the steps that we've taken and the results that we drove by making this improvement. Now, let's switch gears just a little bit. We'll take a look at some of the ways that people manage top-down projects in Kinexus. So I'm gonna go to a project management dashboard that Greg has access to. What we'll see is we, there is a concept in Kinexus where projects can be owned. There's a concept of ownership in Kinexus. And the ownership model allows us to identify projects aligned with users, with locations within the organization, and with other projects. And it gives us a number of creative ways to visualize improvement work. So for instance, if we look at this project dashboard, we can see how each project ultimately rolls up to one of our strategic initiatives. In this case, safety, finance, quality, and mission and culture. By drilling a little deeper, we can actually see that we have a Kaizen event that's part of our quality initiative that's at risk. With this visibility, we can drill down into that Kaizen event and get a sense of who owns it, what steps we've taken, what conversations we've had, the project plan, the next steps, et cetera. So we could insert ourselves and ask questions, or we can lend a hand and provide assistance knowing that this Kaizen event is causing us an issue as it rolls up to our quality initiative. In a similar way, projects like this can be visualized in order to roll up to a more strategic view. So if we look at the executive strategy dashboard that Greg has access, has access to, here, what we've done is we've aligned in columns our KPIs and the actions that we're working on as they roll up through each of our strategic goals. And each location in our organization can have a very similar dashboard, allowing us to have strategic conversations cascading down throughout the organization. The goal is to, to provide a way to prompt the strategic conversations about our goals, our KPIs, and the actions that we're taking as they run up to achieve those goals. So the last thing I wanna talk about today is I wanna make sure that everyone understands how we would use Kinexus as we strategically build an improvement culture. All of the information that happens across all of the projects in Kinexus ultimately gets aggregated and it allows us to provide a high level view into four key areas. 
we're looking at the reporting section in Kinexus. And what we can see is the four key areas start with status. By understanding the status of the improvements, the projects, and the tasks that are happening in a particular area across a particular time frame, I'm better aligned to know what's happened and I can identify bottlenecks such as overdue work immediately and I can drill into those bottlenecks in order to help provide solutions. So it allows me to see things that are happening early and insert myself as needed as quickly as possible. From there, we look at the concept of activity. There are a number of reports in Kinexus that will highlight the activity of improvement as it happens on a team. We track things like the number of improvement projects that have been submitted and the number that have been completed, and we teach customers to analyze this information, again, to identify when things go right and when things go wrong. We then level that with metrics around engagement. This allows us to know when our users are engaged. It allows us to know what locations and teams are engaged and how our people participate across the improvement spectrum. And it leads us to the last area, which is impact. Impact is an aggregation of all of the benefits that we've captured across all of the projects within the organization. It allows us to see things like cost savings numbers, cost avoidance numbers, revenue generation numbers, and the soft dollars of time savings, along with the safety changes, the quality changes, the satisfaction changes that we've made. And again, we can drill into any of these numbers to see the specifics, but the goal being to give you a way to keep track of the health of your improvement culture and to know when and where to spend your time trying to make it better. So honestly, I hope this gives you an understanding of how Kinexus works. I'm gonna jump back into this embedded slide deck, see if we can wrap this thing up. I'd love it if you join our, our upcoming webinars. I know our team works extremely hard to try to provide a great webinar experience for our people. Our next one is gonna be on February 27th, and it's going to be a webinar entitled Pursuing Zero Harm, and it's going to be presented by Megan Scanlon. And then on March 6th, we have a webinar presented by Barry O'Reilly on why great leaders must unlearn to succeed in today's exponential world. We typically get great feedback about our webinars and I hope you'll join us. If you're not able to join us, then I might, I might recommend that you go on Kinexus.com and check out our webinars, webinars on demand page. It's a great way to kind of go back and see all the other webinars that we've done throughout the, the past. In addition, uh, if you're not signed up already, I would definitely advise you to go look at the two Kinexus blogs. We have an improvement blog, which is very continuous improvement focused. And then we also have a customer blog, which is more focused on our product, uh, where we kind of provide information specific to the Kinexus platform. But if you're not signed up for those, it's a great way to get an email once a day to kind of keep you in the loop on all things improvement. If you prefer to listen, then I would point you towards our podcast. You can get this on iTunes or Google Play or Stitcher or wherever you get podcasts. But again, this is this is one of the areas that we just get unbelievable feedback on in trying to give people a mechanism to listen to improvement information uh, as opposed to having to read or watch. And so we've got about one minute. Uh, a couple of questions did come in through the webinar. So why don't we kind of go through those really quickly if we can. The first one says, uh, do we have to set this up ourselves and how hard is that? Which is, I think, a fantastic question. There's a lot of flexibility in Kinexus and that flexibility typically then means a lot of settings. Uh, that is something that we do alongside our customers. We have a whole department here called our customer experience team that guides people through their journey 
of implementing and training and going through the entire process with Kinexis. So uh, I don't think it's, it's, it is as intimidating as it sounds, and we are there to hold your hand the entire way. So it's not something that ever really poses a problem with customers. Um, we have another question of, can we start small here? And I would say the answer is absolutely yes. We have some customers that really use Kinexis for every employee in their organization, but they didn't always get there on day one. Uh, it, it, there is a journey you have to take in order to try a new software like this. Sometimes you have to implement it in a little bit of a model cell approach and go through some change management. But once you get there, you can just feel the momentum building. And then the last question is, our organization is anti-technology. Uh, do you have any advice? And, <laughs> I would say yes on that one too. I think that you know, most people that consider them, their organization anti-technology don't realize that pen and paper and whiteboards are also technologies. And they're good for certain things. You know, pen and paper helps with memory recall and whiteboards helps when you're standing in the same room to facilitate a conversation. But they also don't help with things like visibility and they don't help with tracking impact and they don't help with creating a searchable repository. So I don't think it's always that you're anti-tech, it's just that you're anti-certain technologies. Um, I, I would say if that's still a problem in your organization, you know, reach out to me directly after this, I'll be happy to help. It's, it's a conversation I have often and I'm happy to do it with you. So anyway, uh, my name is Jeff Russo again. I wanna thank you all for your patience and your attention today. I hope this was a helpful demo and I'm looking forward to the next time I get to do a webinar with you guys. Thanks.